All right, well, we are live and we're going to be talking about all things PPC. So this is super exciting. I am joined by uh, two amazing guests here today. So uh, one is Christian Otto Kelm, who's joining us from Amalize. He's joining us from uh, all the way on the other side of the pond in Germany. And then we have Marissa Lindsay, who's also wearing the same shirt I'm wearing. Um, how embarrassing could that be? No, but Marissa is also from my Amazon guy, and she is actually going to be taking over this live stream here in the future. So it's super exciting that you'll see her face a lot more. And then I just want to make sure, tap, 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 is this microphone on? I, I think I say this every live stream I, I do, but I just want to make sure I am not talking into an empty room because that would be hashtag embarrassing. So can you hear us? Please do two things. One, Click the little thumbs up icon, whether you're watching this on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, wherever. And in the comments, say, yes, we can hear you. Thank you. And who knows? For those of you who are joining live and comment, there may be giveaways of prizes. Um, so I would highly recommend everyone does that real quick. I can hear you. Okay. Well, that, that's good. At least Christian can hear me. Uh, Marissa, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Well, good, good, good. And suddenly my voice goes out. This, we are, we're live. This is not pre-recorded. This is not, uh, we're, we're pretending to be live. So uh, Jeffrey says, yes, we can hear you. Kim K says, can hear you. Geraldine says, yes, we can hear you uh, with like a, 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 probably an emoji. Smiley. Those beginnings of. What's that? A little smiley. Yes, kind of like a smiley bunny emoji. Uh, Katarina says, yes, hello from guys from Spain. So Spain is kind of close to uh, Germany, um, but not not quite. Uh, so, so Christian, I'll give you an opportunity to tell us a little bit more about yourself here in just a second. Um, I am curious, where else is everybody joining us from? So if you don't mind putting that in the uh, comments as well, where are you joining us from? Uh, Marissa, why don't you tell us, where are you joining us from? I'm in New Jersey, so East Coast. Okay. Nice. So you are on the East Coast. I am just down the East Coast from you. Um, I normally am about an hour and a half uh, from where I'm at now, but I'm in Fort Lauderdale, beautiful Fort Lauderdale at the West End Hi. Hotel in Fort Lauderdale Beach Ooh. at Seller Summit. So if you are at Seller Summit or you know someone who is at Seller Summit, uh, which is an event put on by Steve Chu and Tony Erbach. Um, if you're there, come find me. I've got my mag shirt on today, so make sure to come up and say hi. Uh, would love to uh, chat with uh, all the uh, mag aficionados out there. Um, and then Christian, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm in, uh, sitting here in the north of uh, Germany, directly between Hamburg and Bremen. So uh, I think... Um... When you go around the globe, uh, it's in the same length as New York, I think. Okay, gotcha. Your microphone's just a, a wee bit quiet. Sorry. No, that no, that that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Just I just wanted to, everyone wants to hear you. Um, so, uh, tell us a little bit about Amalize. Mm -hmm. Who is Amalize and who is Christian? Yeah, uh, Christian. That's me. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Amalyze is uh, a software as a service tool. Um, we are uh, deliver data and information uh, for for you all for your Amazon businesses um, to make better decisions. Um, that's the that's the normal idea behind it. And since a few weeks, uh, we have also an open beta for Amazon advertising. Um, yeah. And from my point of view, I'm doing this this since ten years now for seller, vendor, agency consultant private label and last but not least now since over four years uh, for MLIs in the software as a service uh, tool section gotcha so you, you've gotten to see some things that have uh, worked and not worked and one of the things i've gotten to know christian pretty well over the last uh two years or so because uh, analyze has oftentimes been a sponsor of the events i've put on under uh, maximizing e-commerce um Christian has some unique perspectives that sometimes in uh, the U.S. we might think of things a little differently, but because Christian's coming to us from a uh, 
German engineering minded perspective, uh, sometimes it's a little different. I think that's good. It's good. So uh, for those of you who have never joined us for one of these live streams before, or if you're back and you just want to refresh you on the rules, basically we're going to go through, uh, for the most part, chronologically, uh, the questions as they come in. We reserve the ultimate right uh, between myself and Marissa to go out of order if we feel like it. So, and that's not because your question was bad if we skipped you or whatever. It's because um, maybe just something caught our fancy that uh, tied in with what we were already talking about. So, um, so on that note, I did say a few things about, hey, can you hear me? And where am I? Where are you from? So we also have Sapsafi saying late, but can hear you. Thank you for uh, joining better late than never. Um, Facebook user, which Facebook user, we would love to know who you are. So you must be in the Facebook group. So if you go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook, which I believe there would be a link in the description. If not, just go to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook, just like it sounds. And all you got to do is click a little link button pops up or pop-up comes up and then you click the button to authorize Facebook to share your name. Um, and then that way we would know who you are um, as opposed to the generic Facebook user. And then uh, Patrick says loud and clear. So everybody who commented who's live, because I get this, people like, hey, I watched the thing you did with Mina like a month ago and you said you were doing a giveaway. Yes, but that was only for people that were live. Just to be crystal clear on this. Live and commented. So if you live and commented it, um, we'll go ahead and give you a free copy of the PPC course on Mag School. Um, all you got to do is email Kevin at myamazonguy.com, and then we will send you uh, a coupon code to sign up for the um, free version of the PPC course. So also has Exitin saying yes. I'm assuming yes means yes, you can hear me as opposed to yes. Uh, there could be a city named yes. I'm just not familiar with it. But all right. So let's get into this. Oh, Christian, you, you seem like you, you know something here. No, but I I, uh, I get your thoughts. Maybe there's a city called yes. There could be. There could, there could be. be. Uh, how would you say what, what's yes in German? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's, it's pretty simple. Pretty okay. Yes. Gotcha. That's, a, that's an easy one. Maybe there's a ya yeah and a yes somewhere. Maybe they're like next to each other. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get into questions because uh, hearing me ramble on is not what you came here for. You came here to learn and to get your questions answered. And we want to do that for you. So we brought on Christian to answer questions, um, put him in the hot seat, so to speak. Uh, we know our audience asks really good questions. And so one issue we have every time we do a live stream, we run out of time. And so uh, Christian is basically donating his time to come on here and ask or answer questions that everyone's asking. And so we will have a hard stop at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so that is at the top of the following hour. So make sure to get your question in earlier because the earlier you get your question, the more likely we will ask it and you will get an answer. And so I'm going to start off with someone who is almost without fail. Uh, the first person to ask the question, and this uh, is a multi-part one. You ready for a multi-part one, Christian? All right. Part one, when placing a highly searched three-keyword phrase into a 149-character title, how critical is it that the phrase be placed close to the beginning of the visible portion of a properly styled title? And two, does Amazon value the beginning of the title more and only scan a portion of the title for keywords? That's a, that's a good question. What say you, Christian? Yeah. Uh, first, uh, the title length only belongs to the, to the style guides of a, of a different category. So don't get it wrong with a specific naming of 60, 100, 149, or, or 200. It depends on your category. Uh, secondly, I have never seen any connection between uh, the keywords in the front or the end or the middle of the title. But what is necessary to have a highlighted searched free keyword phrase in the correct order? 
So ABC, mm. somebody searching for ABC, that's uh, necessary. If it's CBA, then you maybe have a relevance loss of 5 or 10% or whatever. Uh, on the other side, uh, if it comes to the locations in the title, uh, it's always discussed about length or technique. It's about technique. Of course, you have a shorter title shown in the mobile. Um, you have different titles, uh, four row titles on the mobile, it's on the desktop and all the different uh, situations. So make sure that the relevant information for the customer to click and understand your product, to understand the values, that information should be placed first. Not the search terms are relevant mm. for that click or that value information. So that's uh, uh, my answer for it. I have never seen a connection between the positioning, but uh, the correct uh, A, B, C, uh, that is absolutely necessary. Okay, good to know. All right, so next up, Mike Butkus. And no, sorry, we have missed the second part. Oh, oh, the, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I thought yeah, I thought you already answered that included, but no, no, I'm gonna let you dive right into it. The value of the beginning of a title more, and oh yeah, sorry. Okay, it's sorry, I, I did think you answered relevant. that. So you, I thought you did a great job answering it, actually. All right, so we have Mike Butkus, and I'm sure you probably get this your whole life, but the the famous football player Dick Butkus, in any relation by chance? Um, so is there a correlation between your daily budget for a campaign and how frequently um, you're making changes and checking it? Yeah, and then a, kind of absolutely. a follow up would be how many changes and generally I, I, let's let's take that one yeah. one at a time. Uh, so uh, it doesn't matter how often you're checking your balance account, your selling account, your your ad console. If there are five euro or five dollar budget, you can check it thousands of times. That will not make any uh, differences. Um, but um, there is a correlation uh, between your daily budget and how frequently you're making changes, especially with mm -hmm. new updates. Of course, now you have a campaign-wide uh, possibility of uh, setting it to 25% um, uplift or 100% uplift with uh, API, with advertising API. Uh, with your ad console, you can just click it on uh, account level and your setup budgets higher for 25 or 100%. So uh, when you now ch make changes on, on daily or hourly situations, Amazon has to recalculate all mm -hmm. the time. So that will influence your um, daily budget. The normal situation is five euro and you change it to 50 euro. Yes, then it has a directly impact course. When you're running out of your five euro or five dollar, then you have nothing more to spend. That's the reason why you should use um, the day parting uh, to make sure to see when your campaigns run out of budget. So it doesn't, it, there is no direct correlation between the success of your campaigns and changing it from 20 to 21 or 19 dollar uh, in bad steps. But you need to make sure never run out of budget for your campaigns. That mm. is a direct correlation. No budget, no ads, big problem. Now, would you say that also the size of your budget, which might play into what he was asking here too, it might not, um, but I'll just follow up question this, is the size of your budget like if you're spending five dollars, five euros a day, or versus a thousand dollars, a thousand euros a day, you'd have more data, so you would want to optimize more often. Would that be a fair way to say it too? Uh, yes and no. On the one side, you will maybe spend more money, but uh, if you set all your budgets to unlimited or one thousand or nine thousand euro, whatever you want, um, you will not have better success in your advertising course. It's oh, okay. I see the direction based on that. relevance. It's like the ninety nine hundred ninety nine dollar trick for CPC. Everybody's talking about the highest CPC will win the ad auction. No, that's not right. true. Set your bids to nine hundred and ninety nine euro. Euro, you will not win 100% of auctions because you are not part of all that auctions. So uh, that is absolutely relevant with the budget, with the bids, not the highest one or the most spender will win at the end. Got it. So if I'm, I'm these are 
ice tongs for my hotel room here. So if I was selling ice tongs and I, I want to go after iPhone case, I can't just say I want to bid a thousand dollars or a thousand euros because I'll never show up because they know this will never make a sale for iPhone case. You cannot um, buy relevance on Amazon. It's exactly. not purchasable. That, very good. Very good. All right. So how many changes is generally suggested to make for a campaign at a time? I see multiple PPC changes being made on a single ASIN campaign that can collectively affect performance. Yeah. Um, the problem here is um, to the changes on a campaign. Of course, on the campaign level, you can only adjust uh, the budget and the modifiers. So uh, especially we have to need to talk about the changes on uh, ad group level, on target level. Of course, you have a campaign, the ad group, and the targets, ASIN or keywords. And the normal changes with higher or lower bits are directly here. On campaign level, you have modifiers, fixed up, fixed down, fixed up and down, exact, uh, sorry, fixed bit. Um, don't change that. Uh, when it comes to ad group and target level, um, there is a simple rule for changes. If you don't reach your goal, you have to recalculate and have to change something. Mm -hmm. And when new data comes in, you need to recalculate. And if it fits into your goals, you don't have to change anything. Yeah? Never change a running system. Um, so it starts always with setting the correct goals and then measure your goals. And when you find a difference between your measured goal and your data, then you need to have to change something. From my point of view, don't change on campaign level. Of course, on the ad group and on the target level, where is the data coming from? Directly to that target on the ad group. Campaign is directly influencing every target, every ad group. So don't play on campaign level. It's better to go on the least point on the targets directly, keyword level, ASIN level. Awesome. What would All right, be... so Sorry, go ahead. Question. Um, so what would be your suggestion then um, for, you know, just making those adjustments in general, right? So, you know, once a week, twice a week for, you know, any kind of targets or, you know, bid adjustments. Because um, I think what they're getting at here is, you know, maybe doing a bunch of changes in one day isn't, or, or hourly, or, you know, um, isn't going to be best. And it's not going to give Amazon's, you know, algorithm to really adjust to all of those changes. So, um, like, what would you suggest as far as, like, um, you know, weekly optimizations or, you know, daily? Um, it's not easy to answer, of course. There are different complications in it. Uh, when you look into the direct data of the ad console, you don't will see that problem. When you're looking in the ad API, advertising API, you see where's the attribution one day, seven days, 14 days, and 30 days. And in mm -hmm. our tool, for example, you can optimize for one day attribution or for 30, 14, or seven day attribution. And when you're optimizing and look, have a different look back window of seven days, of course, with the new data, you will collect seven days data and then adjust the bit for red time frame yeah so you're optimizing on daily base you have to look on our data but at the end all the time when new data is collected for seven days one day 14 days or 30 days when you make changes when your goal is not reached but there is no typical rule for um let's talk about fmcg fast movement consumer goods uh where purchase directly you're looking for them you need them you purchase them so Retribution should be uh, really, really short, maybe one day. But uh, when we're talking about a vacuum cleaner, you start to look at the product, you think about the product, add to cart, ask somebody if you're allowed to purchase it. And now you have maybe a seven day or 14 day attribution window until the purchase is happening. And that is one of the biggest problems we have seen while developing uh, our own advertising solution that nobody is talking about that scenario connected to the attribution course your answer is absolutely correct how often should i optimize but before that we have to question how many data we have look at before we 
make a decision. So that's the complicated point at the, uh, at the moment, but Amazon has solved that puzzle completely with uh, Amazon stream data, marketing stream data. And so you have hourly based data and now you can build it up for your specific goals, for your time. And to sum up, of course, I really like that topic. When you are looking at your data, quarterly based, change your data only quarterly based. When you need a quarter, so three months, to decide what you want to change and you always look only on quarterly data, then just change it on quarterly data. You don't need to make daily changes when you only look at it in quarterly base, also for weekly uh, things. When you change your data weekly, always on Tuesday or, or whatever, then uh, just set it to the last seven days and then make your decisions. Don't look at the days before it or hope for better results. Just take that windows and optimize also in that turners seven days and keep that going. That's absolutely important. All right. Okay, good answer. Next question. Um, I also, love it. Marissa's jumping into this. Uh, so when adjusting bids down, do you adjust by no more than 5%? When adjusting bids up or down, what general method methodology do you recommend for bid adjustments regarding amount and time frame? So this kind of goes into what we were talking about. Yeah, that's re really easy. Uh, don't try this in your account. Fixed bids is the only directly feedback data. Uh, you know your bid and you know your CPC at that level if you're uh, allowing uh, Amazon uh, optimizing down only or up and down. You will never know when and why Amazon has used which percentage to adjust your bid. So from my point of view, don't try this in your account. You cannot measure anything. And without a measurement, you are not steerable. You cannot steer anything. So from, from our point of view as advertising um, tool, uh, we recommend everybody get rid of up and down. Absolutely. Get rid of up and down. Best is fixed bit. Down will work, but don't use any modifiers. You cannot handle it as a tool, as an agency. You're not having the, the, the performance behind it. We are talking about campaign level adjustments for all ad groups and all targets. So, okay, where's one solution, one campaign, one ad group, one target, one ASIN or one ASIN, one keyword, and then you can go. When do whatever you want, uh, it's still not absolutely good to measure. Of course, you didn't know when Amazon will go up and down or you use a modifier 900 percentage. When is Amazon using 123? When 450? You will never know. At the moment, Amazon is not giving out any data about it. So don't try this in your account from my point of view. That's, that could be a controversial topic sometimes, but uh, thank you for, for bringing that up. Um, I'll, I'll do the next one here. So Strike Club asks, uh, when I search my product with a keyword, my product's title shows up uh, without my brand name. But if I include my brand name with the keyword on the search, it comes up fine. How can I fix this? Yeah, you cannot fix it. Um, I have had a three and a half hour live stream with ASIN analysis, uh, like you are doing it in the United States. I think what's called R R R L, ASIN mm -hmm. real, uh, and you're you're doing it uh, once once a week. That's really really cool. Um, oh, the, um, yes, tomorrow folks can join a, our. Uh, our colleague, John Aspinall, for the ASIN that's, Review Live. That's so cool. I, I really like it. And and I, I have had uh, done it today three and a half hours. <laughs> that was crazy. Mm -hmm. And we have seen the same the same issues. Amazon is uh, deleting the brand via different searches. On the other side, it's there. And it's popping up. It's typical beta for Amazon. You cannot fix it. So so just, just to help me understand this. So basically, if I'm reading this right, they search for a keyword without their brand title, it shows up, but it doesn't show up if, if say, you know, ice tongs and they show up, but if it's, you know, Christian's brand ice tongs, it, it doesn't show up, but it shows up without the branded keyword. Like that doesn't uh, No, no, sense. no. Uh, as I understand the question, where is only the brand missing in the title? The, with, okay. If I, when yeah, I search my product with a keyword, my product title missing. shows up. 
Oh, oh, yeah. okay, got it. So, yeah, so okay, now, now, now I see where this is going. So, Amazon's starting to take out the title in the t- or sorry, yeah, take yeah. out the which is funny because Your brand years, is missing. They've been yeah, yeah. putting it into the titles because yes. I was resisting that my own brand for years. I'm like, no one cares. I'm not yeah. Nike. They're not looking for. In some cases, they were, but most of the time, they were not looking for my brand name. Marissa, it looks like you, you, you've got some. Uh, uh, yeah. ideas on this one. So, you know, as a, as a senior brand manager at my Amazon guy, um, you know, we push through a lot of, um, you know, title copy for clients. Um, you know, usually we don't try to include, you know, the brand name sometimes, um, yeah. this, if it's, you know, if, if we would rather push something else, right. More important or a feature, um, kind of going into that other question, but sometimes it just pops up anyway, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. we can push it and it just, you know, shows up and, you know, there's nothing we really can do about it, you know? Uh, but yeah. it's one thing it's just... Amazon is trying all the time uh, to fill uh, title sections uh, directly with sequences based on data. And we all have our brand field filled in the back end. Uh, yeah. So they sometimes directly see, oh, that's the brand, that's the name, just uh, pasted to the beginning of the title. And we are doing it uh, often and we are seeing it from category and category. United States, Europe uh, at the same time are directly um, into that problem. But um, normally uh, you have on the PDP the direct link to a brand store connected to your brand's name. So that's not the main problem. But uh, as we don't know, Strike Club, maybe it's Adidas or or it's Nike or else. When I'm uh, Lego or so, I will directly call Amazon. My brand is not in my title. That is a big problem. Uh, But as you said, normally the brand is not the typical searched thing we are talking yeah. about products that solve problems and uh, give us an added value and not it's oh it's that brand i need that brand so yeah and sometimes well, we've tried um to just um if your brand isn't the first word in the title sometimes we'll do like the product type first and then buy and then the brand so it's like the fourth, yeah. fifth word in the title amazon is doing it with their own brands yeah yeah, yeah, by mm. Sony Mo and so on. Yeah, yeah. And I think 2017 or so, Amazon has placed the brands at the end, and all the Chinese sellers were like, Yeah, uh, put your uh, uh, keywords first and your brand at the end. It will boost the algorithm, as the first question was connected to. But that was uh, just senseless. That was the time when the mobile traffic hit it hard on Amazon. And a few guys had such long brand names that you weren't able to understand the product in the short mobile titles. Yeah. Now, what I find fascinating about this one, though, is that Amazon is, from what he's saying, and what you said, Christian, you're seeing this as well, that they're selectively adding and not adding in the brand name into the title based on the intent of the search which that's kind of new and that's getting into some interesting ai but i like that direction better than them just forcing the brand name into the beginning of the title yeah no but it has be, it has begun uh, to get even harder since uh, two months in uh, fast movement consumer goods for example chocolate chocolate bars and some stuff we didn't have even bullet points on the pdp on the desktop we know it for mobile, we are hidden between a, f- a few more, read more, but now we also have categories and product types where the bullet points are hidden directly on the desktop. So there's always a trial and error and beta process and don't get uh, crazy about that. If it's only the brand, lean back, everything is okay. But if we are talking about essential information, your volume, your your material, your function, your features, mm-hmm. and such stuff, when you have a real problem. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Marissa, why don't you go for the next one? Yeah. So this is from uh, Karen Singh. So a uh, long-time subscriber, I think. I've seen that on other Yes. Podcasts. I've seen that name quite a few times, too. Yeah. Um, so if you were to create a set of portfolios and name them by their strategy, what would the portfolio names be and what would the strategies be? For example, single keyword campaign, top of search, et cetera. Yeah, uh, we have to think in different ways. Uh, normally, when you think about one product or one portfolio um, accounts, there's a different scenario than the big accounts. Because the big accounts need the portfolios for the different uh, the portfolios for the product portfolios. So don't get it wrong. You said a 
portfolio of campaigns and you had, have a portfolio of products, maybe for garden, home improvement, uh, toys and all that stuff. So when you are building directly, normally product based portfolios in the normal scenario of a seller, uh, first portfolio I have always is tests. Uh, when I have a portfolio, it's called launch. Sorry, launched. And the third portfolio is called uh, archived. Of course, uh, the archived uh, data, you will always see them. Uh, and I want to go get rid of them. Uh, then I have a special portfolio um, videos for specific um, ads or new ad formats, like also sponsored display videos. Um, when typically, when new features are run out, like uh, the sponsored display video slot top of search. Uh, if you're now setting up uh, video ads, sponsored brand video ads, and you're not linking them to the product, you can now link them to your brand store. Then they have a possibility to appear on top of search. For such special uh, features of Amazon advertising, I will always build up a portfolio. Um, the problem here is you can rename portfolios, but you cannot uh, erase the portfolio. So at the end, you have a lot of portfolios. And in my accounts, they are called X1, X2, X3, X4. So we are at the end of a portfolio list. Um, then, of course, brand protection. As bigger you are, as more nerdy you are, you have one brand protection SB, one brand protection SB, SP, one brand protection SD, and uh, you can then cluster your uh, ideas in typical scenarios. It's like naming the campaigns correctly. You need to name your portfolios correctly. When it comes up for single keyword campaigns, uh, you can put in a portfolio and product uh, completely all your single keyword campaigns to make sure you find them directly. Uh, it's interesting when you're searching for fails or new developments in your account to just click on the portfolio and see uh, the accumulated data and their behavior. That's absolutely um, necessary or with the top of search when you're using it, uh, just take the campaigns. But make sure portfolios are not on ad group level. So that is a problem behind it. Mm -hmm. So when you have a campaign and you're you're building up uh, keyword brands, keyword uh, directly product name, keywords uh, connected to the product. So if you're talking about garden share and covers and cushions, uh, don't build too many ad groups. There is at the moment, I think, only one ad group who can handle specific segments, not called portfolios anymore. It's called segments, where you can build up um, uh, cooler ways of portfolios for ASINs, targeted ASINs on keyword level. And it doesn't matter if it's in ad group one, two, three, or campaign one, two, three. It's uh, directly for the whole account. Uh, that tool builded up a solution for that. But so in that scenario, uh, use your portfolios with a directly strategic based idea, or as I said, launch, test, archived campaigns, or for specific new types like videos or sponsored display video ads, feel free. Um, but keep in mind at the moment, you're not able to uh, delete a portfolio. Awesome. All right. So uh, just as a housekeeping note, uh, we are about halfway through this live stream. Time goes by quick when you're having fun. Uh, so um, if you want the best chance of having your question answered, uh, Marissa is going to be going through here for the most part uh, in order, but she is she reserves the right to go in whatever order she feels like if necessary. Um, so I'm going to disappear here for in the background and it'll be the two capable hands of these amazing individuals here. And so uh, again, if you want your question answered, make sure you get it into the chat sooner than later because we're going somewhat chronological and we always run out of time. So with that, Marissa, I'll let you take over. All right, thank you. All right, so the next question we have is a LinkedIn question. So this is from Faraz Ahmad. Um, how can we deal with those keywords which have good conversions but high ACoS? Yeah, um, it's really easy. You have to adjust your 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 bids. Of course, you're not able to pay uh, that amount of money um, to get that conversions more and more. Um, so that's a typical problem. Um, but the high conversions are not good. 
as they are followed by a high ACOS. And on the other side, uh, it's also not good to have a low ACOS with a bad conversion. Uh, so your only possibility is uh, to work on the on the ads. Um, on the other side, when you're in a big competition and you have the high conversions, you are welcome to the club. Yeah, a high conversion means you're on the ad auction, you were relevant for it, the customer has seen you, you gain the impression. Every impression is a one ad auction. Don't get it wrong. Every impression is a one ad auction. And they clicked on you and they purchased your product. That means absolutely perfect fit for the customer, for the algorithm, and for the money in the pocket of Amazon. But with a high ACOS, uh, you are always facing a problem. The easiest ways here is to manipul manipulate your own mindset, going back to average ACOS of your whole account or for the whole product, or go back to Amazon account takeoffs to see the bigger picture behind it. Uh, what I always recommend here is, for example, um, to get uh, to count your organic um, sales and take your organic sales into your uh, ad sales. And so, for example, you have 50-50. So with every product you sold via ads, you would know that there is the margin backing you up from one more product that is sold organic. And so, for example, your CPC, you can double it up. Of course, uh, the, mon the one margin you're investing uh, is backed up by one more organic sale. So you have two margins to invest into the advertising. Uh, that's the easiest way. Uh, on other ways, um, you can optimize your listing so you can uh, get up your conversion rate. Also higher. Everything is possible. And we, when we're talking about 5 or 10% more conversion, so from 65 to 10% more, 7. One five, um, so you have more conversion, so you can lower your ACOS or you can pay the money to play the game. So that's the typical scenario um, to manage that. Perfect. And then another LinkedIn question. I'm not quite sure I'm familiar with this. Um, this is a program or a 3PL says really? is solution list learning shipment setting a beneficiary or beneficiary for sellers. So um, if you could just maybe provide some more context for that question, I'm not exactly sure. I know what you're asking. I've um, tried to, to translate it and I haven't found the solution. Yeah. So maybe just some more context there. We'll move on to the next question. For maybe now. just a tipping mistake. Yeah. And then this is, hi, Kevin, can you please explain by how much percentage do we adjust the Amazon suggested bid while making a PPC bid? So maybe, Christian, uh, you'd be able to answer this. Yeah. Um, uh, the <laughs> problem here is the understanding behind the suggested bid. The suggested bid is only for you, for your product at that time connected to the keyword you're trying to advertise on. So if you're changing the ASIN, for that keyword, you will maybe see a different suggested bit. If you're looking tomorrow into it, you will see another suggested bit. Um, the problem here is Amazon is not interested in your success. We are interested in the click rate. So click the ad, we will make money. Your scenario normally is you know your, for example, organic conversion rate. And nearly the same it is overall with advertising. So when you're coming up with 5% at the end, you will see 5% conversion rate with your advertising. So that should be your calculation behind it. Margin calculated with uh, your conversion rate, that is the bit you should allow to be paid in your account for the specific targets. If you have a strategy behind it and you're saying, oh, that is brand protection. We need to spend more to make sure there is no competitor shown on our page, on our keyword. That's a different game. You can set a, the bid as high as you want or as $999, the maximum that is allowed. Um, on the other side, you have a specific idea of customer lifetime value or average order value. So that means you're selling one product garden share and you want to be the next purchase your cushions or your covers. So you want to build a bigger, um, uh, sorry, card value. The, the normal uh, basket. Um, so, um, or you have the idea of 
launching a product at the beginning make sure everybody sees your product when you're just a uh, hard change your uh, advertising behavior from ppc to cpm when you're only looking for a low cpm to get millions and millions and also billions and billions of impression for a really really low invest and on the other side, uh, when you're figuring out you have one, two or 10 uh, direct competitors for your product that can replace your product exactly when you're also not interested in the percentage of a suggested bid, you are interested in how can I get as much as possible clicks while be shown on the advertiser. Of course, Amazon PPC is just traffic. And you need to make sure that the traffic hopefully at the end lands on your product. It should be shown, it should be part in the ad auction and should be winning the click. After that, it's only PDB, conversion, good listing, listing quality, pictures, images, and so on. So it depends on your specific strategy, but when it comes to the profitability strategy, margin combined with uh, conversion rate and don't have a deep look on the suggested bid courses based just your ASIN to that target and it's not based on your pocket. Yeah, makes sense. It's going to really depend on, you know, what your goals are, um, you know, for that product. And then, you know, also just making sure that you're staying in budget and stuff like that, too. You know, if you're constantly going out of budget, you probably want to be closer to the suggested bid. Um, but, you know, don't let Amazon boss you around because at the end of the day, they, they also want to make money and make a sale off of your products. So um, I've seen that suggested bid be a little bit elevated um, in certain situations for, a little um, bit. <laughs> for so, you know. Take that with, with caution, but uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then Shane says, hello. Hello, Shane. Next question. If I run broad match on a keyword like golf bag, would it also target keywords around golf and bag? Because I don't want to be shown on keywords, handbag or golf clubs. Yeah, there's at the moment a big discussion on LinkedIn, I think in a few advertising accounts in Amazon.com, um, United States, the broad match is not working like the normal behavior anymore. There are a few problems. We haven't that problem seen in, the, uh, in Europe at the moment, but yes, yeah, sometimes that could happen. Um, from my point of view, I will start such questions always with a question again. Um, course why you're using broad you have all that amazon tools out there uh, category insights product niche explorer um, brand analytics with all the data behind it all tools out there um, so there is no need from my point of view um, to use our um, match types when exact match of course when we are bringing it back to the normal work of progress we are developing our product and looking for added value and uh, for the price. And then we have our product and then we are building up content. We are doing Amazon SEO as a fundamental basic for our later advertising. And from my point of view, everybody is forgetting about it. We have done the Amazon PPC uh, job while building up the Amazon SEO fundamental basics. Of course, in that scenario, you are working with a keyword list. That keyword list you have optimized your product for. Why you're not advertising your product for it? Um, so um, as there are a lot of problems with broad match and phrase matches, I'm always the exact uh, guy when it comes to that match types. Of course, you have done a good job, build it up a good listing, use that list. And if you want to get to know more keywords, use the tools out where reverse look up and what it's called in all the tools, or you're using just Amazon own data tools that are now since two years free for everybody, you will find directly the keywords you need to look on, you need to advertise on, and there is no um, necessary uh, relevant idea from my point of view behind it to use any more like broad match or phrase match. And especially as I have seen that problem, United States, LinkedIn, Amazon guys, and uh, also women's, men and women, not only, only the guys. And that is a problem and get rid of a problem with exact match. Yeah. Okay. 
And then from Pearson, any thoughts about PPC day parting? So I know we, we touched on that briefly earlier in the, in the yeah. podcast. Um, day parting, that's really easy. Um, a good Amazon advertising co uh, call, uh, sorry, a good Amazon advertising account will never need day parting. There's no reason for it. You have uh, the hourly data and you can adjust your bits up and down uh, based on the new conversions or uh, impressions or whatever routes you're you're looking for. But what we have seen is in the day parting, you see when your budget runs out, uh, and that is the interesting part, to shift your budget from maybe non-relevant or non-performing times to more performing times. So with good day parting, we are not talking about uh, save money. We are talking about spend the money on the correct or better correct spots. But normally, um, that is a budget problem. So we are talking about budget shifting. And you're losing all your customer funnel. Everybody is looking at the at the data from Amazon Stream. We are offering also solutions for it. And everybody is saying, yeah, at the beginning of the day, um, it's always bad. A cost, that's not good. They are only purchasing at the evening. Yeah, think about the people. They are moving to work, to their job. They are scrolling in there uh, in there while having breakfast at work. Oh, maybe I like that. Maybe I like that. Click on the product, add to cart, no purchase. And then in the evening, hey, uh, I found that. Should we buy it? Oh, yes, let's, uh, let's buy that. And with day parting, you're closing normally your complete funnel. And that's a problem. Keep that in mind. It's not only about... Uh, getting conversions, clicks, conversions. No, no, no. We are talking about a whole customer journey, upper funnel, mid funnel, and so on. So that's a big problem with uh, with PPC day parting. Uh, at the beginning, it looks absolutely fantastic, but what's behind it and how many competitors will benefit when you stop to advertise and stop being part of ad auctions? So ah, that's a problem. So that's the thoughts about it. <laughs> yeah and you know on the same uh, kind of note too the reverse i've seen um you know clients that sell like really industrial products right and you know people are only buying them um during work hours you know for office supplies or, or cleaning supplies sometimes you know they're not they're not thinking about it after hours so um you know it's going to depend on you know your products absolutely and, yeah yeah okay also when it comes to weekends holidays specific holidays uh, you will see different behaviors, but what we have seen in the normal analysis, uh, you will uh, kill your funnel. Another one from Karen. Um, sponsored display campaigns are my least utilized campaigns. I just noticed the results tend to be far worse compared with uh, sponsored brands, sponsored products. Any suggested SD ad campaign structure? So VCPM, clicks, conversion, et cetera. Yeah. Um, sponsored uh, display ads or product display ads, as we were called formerly, are the highest level of advertising at the moment um, when we are not talking about Amazon DSP. But for normal seller, Amazon uh, sponsored display ads are really, really hard to manage. Of course, uh, as you as you ask it, we are uh, sometimes uh, we CPM, where uh, for clicks, conversions, or impressions. So you have to decide. We have that different look back windows in marketing, in remarketing, in watched, in hours watched from seven to three hundred and sixty five days. And in the United States, uh, you have that audiences, Amazon audiences, I think over four or 6,000. In Europe, we have 2,000 different um, scenarios. Man knew the videos in it. Uh, nobody knows which, dis uh, which placement you can directly uh, manage. Of course, you're always seeing 10 different sizes available for that ads. And you never know how to make sure you only use the skyscraper ads in the syrup or only on the PDP. It's really, really hard. Hard. On the other side, when we are talking about, uh, for example, Twitch, it's the only way to get into Twitch. You have eight audiences for Amazon Twitch in the sponsored uh, display ads, and you have a CPM of less than uh, 10 cents, and you gain millions and millions and millions of impressions. And so uh, for the full funnel, sponsored display is really, really cool um, for uh, brand protection absolutely cool retargeting retargeting your own products not competitors your own products 
awesome. And it, when it comes to the lookback windows, um, from my point of view, what I will always suggest is use all the lookback windows for remarketing, for retargeting all the days, use all of them and get rid of uh, which ones that are not working. Sponsored displays are a hard trial and error process. And that is from my point of view, one situation why everybody's, uh, every seller is avoiding that. And on the other side, you need to invest at the beginning to figuring out what is working for you. Um, so there is nobody outside uh, without directly looking in your product and your strategy to saying that is the way you have to do it. Of course, uh, you have to find your own gold nuggets. And on the other side, it's so, so complicated to set them all off. There's no copy function and you have to build it again and again and again. And also when it comes to advertisements uh, to the slots, you can manage the logo, the headline. Uh, the title name and the picture behind it. You can set it on, you can set it off. There are so many adjustments on that sponsored displays uh, that makes it hard to get easy into it. And that is one of the biggest problems. So that's what everybody is talking about. 80% of all the spend and results are coming from sponsored products. They have the most ad slots on Amazon, um, but sponsored displays are cool latest when it comes to brand protection and for reach. When we're talking about reach of Amazon, uh, specific audiences, that is really cool. Of course, 6,000 Amazon audiences in the United States, that's really cool. Yeah, they're, they're a good way to diversify You know, your advertising. Um, you know, campaigns for sure. I've seen them run some of the lowest A costs too, you know, sometimes. It really is going to depend on the video itself yep. as well. Um, yep. So like having that product, um, you know, front and center in the first, you know, two seconds of the video, um, you know, that's going to be important. Um, you know, strong branding and stuff like that too. Hello, yep. welcome back. I'm yeah, back. One, one, one I'm back. I just problem. wanted, what's that? No, no, you're not the biggest problem. Sorry. No, I, I, I am. I, some, some might say. It depends on who you no. ask. Uh, the sponsored display ads have one big problem. Uh, they are shown uh, when uh, you are logged in. When you're logged out, they are not shown. When they are changing it. Also, with the sponsored display uh, specific slots, they are shown. They are not shown. That's why you have always that fluctuations in your account and you're thinking like, oh, it's not working. Yes, it is working. Amazon has stopped to show that specific placements. And we are doing with that with sponsored displays all the time. And that's one of the things uh, you don't see with sponsored brands and sponsored products. You have that ad slots, they are always full of ads, but with sponsored displays, they are trying all the time. And I really don't like it. But as I said, for brand protection, 100%. Awesome. Well, I just wanted to jump in here real quick because we are having so much fun and the challenge is that oftentimes good things do come to an end. So we're running out of time here. So depending on the complexity of the questions, we probably have time for one, maybe two more questions. So uh, Marissa will pick a really good one okay. for what might be or may not be, but it might be the last question we uh, we get to in this uh Live stream. Okay. Um, I like this question. Um, I have my own opinion on it, but Ooh. I will let Christian uh, take take over. Um, so thoughts on PPC automation softwares versus doing it ourselves, the human touch. Um, softwares like PackView, etc. Personally, I prefer doing myself via bulk sheets, but am I being inefficient? Yeah, uh, the, the main problem here is, is time. Yeah, time and how often you can uh, get new data with, with the tools and the API behind it, hourly based stream data, we will um, find better and faster decisions. The normal problem versus uh, human and tools is always the same. You are setting the rules and you are setting the goals. When you don't understand how the tool is working, you will at the end always get the results you have entered with your rules. That is the problem. We are seeing that as, as a tool um, in our open beta all the time. Um, we are setting a goal like that. We are reaching that goal. And after that, we are saying, no, 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 that was not we, what we have talked about. And we are like, oh, yeah, you, was, you have entered it. Here you can see it. Um, so that is the problem. If you have enough time, 
no problem. Uh, the new tools in the Amazon Ad Console are awesome to manage your account directly. It's so smooth with all the filters and so on. But when you have a bigger and bigger account and more and more targets to manage and all that stuff, a tool is really, really good. But on the other side, when you're not interested in hourly data, you're just managing your account once per month, the bulk sheets are absolutely fine. Amazon is optimizing the bulk sheets all the time. Amazon is ad, uh, optimizing the API all the time. And Amazon is optimizing the ad console all the time. So feel free to use whatever fits for you. That is the point we have to talk about. Of course, it's your time you're spending. And when you're purchasing a tool, it costs money. It saves hopefully time and is it worth for you? And that's the point behind it. And you need to understand what the tool is doing. Yeah, you can need a hammer to get rid of a wall or to hammer a nail into the wall. So that is the problem behind it normally. Um, so from my point of view, feel absolutely free what's working for you. When you're absolutely into Excel, go with the bulk sheets. When you like the UI as CI of the ad console and have only a, a less account, so it's not as big as possible 1 million ad spend per month, go for it. But when yeah. you need directly adjustments all the time, all the time, all the time, you need a tool or an army of VAs. So that's the typical problem. Yeah, awesome. Well, what were your uh, strong opinions there, Marissa? Well, here at my Amazon guy, we, we do the bulk sheets, so we do everything by hand. Um, it's my opinion that, you know, the automation softwares are really good for um, maintaining um, what you've got going. They're really good for, you know, keeping things uh, to the status quo and, you know, adjusting things. Um, um, but for growth, um, I almost always recommend um, bulk sheets and stuff like that, um, you know, for adding keywords and, and for doing some, um, you know, building of your brand. Um, especially when it comes to like search query uh, performance reports and, and words like that. Um, but again, yeah, I agree. It's really going to depend on how much time you have uh, to be in there and, and doing that. But uh, one, one, one point, of course, I, I really get your point. That's, that's absolutely what I would say. But if you have a good database with all relevant data, when uh, you start in Crow finding new keywords and so on, it's not so problematic. I, I have to say, of course, we have one of the biggest databases with 3 billion products worldwide. So when you have the database, it's really easy to click on a button. Enrichment campaigns started. You have no problems. But uh, I absolutely feel it. The soft factor behind the decision, is that product really connected to that product? Is that keyword really senseful? Uh, so that should be a decision uh, built up by, by people. Um, mm. But at the end, normally with a good tool, you will advertise that keyword, you will see good results uh, or some, you will see bad results, you get rid of that product. And normally the tools are trying too hard to make a high impact on every keyword you are giving them. They are not deciding to get rid of a keyword. And that is one of the biggest problems. They are always working with auto campaigns, broad phrase, find keywords, find keywords. Get reverse workout, have all the keywords and work directly with them. It's much more easier. And that's why I really, really get your point uh, from the from the human touch for the keyword, for the reasons, for the decisions. The tools at the moment are not so, um, uh, um, yeah, what, what's the word for? Not so soft decisions. Right. Yeah. They're not making that. I think so. Everybody's nobody's hearing the podcast, so everybody uh, understands it. Uh, it's about wait. I, I need to Google it. He 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 does this sometimes. He'll go and Google Translate because you know yeah, they have very precise words in Germany. It's, but it's, okay, uh, it, it's all good. Fingerspitzengefühl means I have instinct. no idea. <laughs> instinct. Oh, instinct. Okay, so th that is the lesson with this. That at the end of the day, right now, AI is great, but it cannot replace human decisions, human instincts, and the ability to make decisions on strategy. It's more reductive, and it can't be creative. So on that note, uh, we are running out of time, and I just wanted to give the opportunity real quick. Uh, Christian, if people wanted to learn more from you or follow you, where would they go? Uh, we have a YouTube channel in English and in German. Of course, that's the easiest way. Uh, when we have a lot of videos with Kevin, 
<laughs> so you yes. can uh, always join uh, the summits and get uh, directly uh, contact and have a look at all the videos. Uh, LinkedIn, of course, is always a possibility. And what I will do, absolutely, I will go through all the YouTube comments and answer them after that uh, directly on the video. Awesome. Well, appreciate that. Appreciate having you on. And um, also wanted to say, folks, what you could do if you wanted to, um, we talked a lot about the PPC side, but you also got to make sure your listing is optimized. So for absolutely free, you can get a video review from one of our optimization professionals here at My Amazon Guy. Just go to myamazonguy.com forward slash ASIN and someone will record a video screen recording very in detail about your product listing, uh, keywords you're list, uh, ranking for and all that fun stuff. Just go to myamazonguy.com forward slash ASIN. And I also wanted to give a shout out to Jumping in the Fire. Uh, Marissa Lindsay did a great job uh, with this live stream. So Christian, great answers. You're very knowledgeable with all this stuff. And Marissa, you did a phenomenal job. And I know this live stream is in good hands. So you can check out Marissa next week as well, uh, where she'll be joined by Joe Shellerud from uh, Ad Advance. So thank you to both of you. And thank you for everyone watching. And we wish everybody a great day.